How often do you clean your Keurig? I mean, get inside, take it apart, cleaning the internal as well as the external reservoir. Well, in this video, that's exactly what I'm doing. So if you want to see that process, keep watching. Welcome to This and That with Denise Jordan. I teach women to make wise home health and beauty decisions. So if you want to learn more about running a household, subscribe. Or if you want to see reviews about products that can benefit you in your home, subscribe because I do videos on those topics all the time. So hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. But definitely check out the show notes in the description box below because that's where I'll link my favorite housekeeping and gardening solutions. Okay, let's jump into it. I am continuing with my spring cleaning and I am working in zone two. And one of the tasks that I decided I would do this week is to clean my Keurig. And whereas I clean the Keurig often, it sits on top of the counter. So when I'm cleaning the counter, I will wipe it down just like I wipe down everything else. But how often do I really get inside, take it apart and give it a good cleaning? not often enough. And one of the things about those kind of appliances, particularly those internal mechanisms, is they can develop a buildup of residue of kind of scale that comes from hard water and that kind of thing. And so we need to clean out that internal reservoir. We need to descale it. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, you could either use vinegar, to help with that, or you can use the Keurig solution. It's a descaling solution that Keurig puts out, and you can e use either one of those, but I am going to use vinegar. Now, let me tell you before I start, I have an old Keurig. I have had it forever and a day. So whereas some of the instructions will tell you to use 10 ounces of vinegar, my Keurig will not draw with that amount of water, that small amount of water in the external reservoir. I need to have more water than that. So what I do is I will use a half and half solution of vinegar and water. So I may fill up the external reservoir half with vinegar and half with water. And what I will do is let that run through. So once you clean up your external parts, then you need to see about cleaning up that internal reservoir. And so I use a solution of half and half distilled white vinegar and water, and I fill the external reservoir, and then I let it run through for a couple of cycles. And then once I let it run through for a couple of cycles, I dump that out, fill the external reservoir with just plain cold water, and then I run that through for a couple of cycles. So let's get that started. Let's look at the parts of the curry. Here's your handle. This is a chamber that the cake cup goes into. You squeeze that to take it out. This little chamber here can get awfully dirty, so that needs to be cleaned out. This is your external reservoir. And there's an internal reservoir somewhere in there that you really can't see. So you can clean this up on a day-to-day -day basis, but the internal reservoir you need to clean out every three to six months. And one of the things that I wanted you to think about was that whereas we clean so many other appliances and things in our kitchen, we want to make sure that this coffee maker that we probably use every day, that we're cleaning the handle, but more importantly, that we're also actually cleaning out this water reservoir. Just because it's water doesn't mean it doesn't need to be clean. And sometimes mold can build up in there. So we also need to clean that. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the water filter. And I'm going to rinse it in cool water. I just brush the outside with a bottle brush, but 
the most part, I'm just going to rinse this piece. And I don't have anything on this bottle brush right now. It's just plain water. I will wash the outside with a little sponge and soap and water. So now we'll get these other pieces washed up. Look at that gunk that gets down in there. When you pierce that K cup, sometimes little coffee grounds end up inside this little chamber so every week you want to clean all that out and then you can take a paper clip pull it out like so and this little pointy thing that's right up in there this is what actually pierces the K cup. Just kind of run a paper clip inside there. About once a week, just to make sure there's no coffee grounds or anything like that that's stuck in there. I tell my husband I'm doing surgery on the machine when I have to do that. So whereas I change the water in the reservoir every day, I don't do all of this every day. I only do all of this about once a week or once every couple of weeks. But when I do empty the water daily, I leave the lid off so that the chamber will dry because what we don't want to have happen is to have water down in this reservoir and then just let it sit there, which would be a perfect medium for bacteria to grow. So every day I put in fresh water when I make my morning coffee, and you should be sure to do that too. But one other thing you can do to be extra safe is dump the water out the night before and then just let the um, reservoir sit and air dry. And this is one of those little furniture movers. You put the furniture on it and then the slick bottom allows things to move easily. I have my Keurig sitting on this because when I have it back in the corner, sometimes I need to move it out and push it back. So, so let's get it reassembled. back in. So I'm going to pour this into the external reservoir. Put to the lid on. No cup. And sit it on top of my little furniture mover. Then that way I can just move it back and forth pretty easily because this puppy is heavy. And I like to have it sitting right there. So now I'll plug it in. So now I'll turn it on and let it cycle through. And like I said, I'll let it cycle through twice. And yes, it sounds like a sick cow. That's just the way it sounds. Mine is fairly old. Here's cup number one.
So now that I've run two cups of the vinegar solution through, I'm going to empty this reservoir and now just fill it with water and just let it run with cool water for a couple of times. And then I let it run for a couple of um, mugs full because otherwise you can still smell just a little bit of vinegar in the water that comes out. But this way, when I run it through a couple of times with uh, just the plain water, that just clears all that out. So here's my Keurig. It's all cleaned up. One of the things I want to make sure you noticed is that while I was working with it, to clean it, I had it unplugged. When I was doing surgery on it, I had it unplugged. Don't do anything with it other than run it through unless it's unplugged. So now that it's all done, I'm ready to make that fresh cup of coffee. Cheers. Well, thank you for joining me as I cleaned up my Keurig today. You know, that coffee maker is one of those appliances that sits on the counter all the time and it just kind of fades into the woodwork. It's like we see it, but we don't see it. But how clean that coffee maker is definitely has a lot to do with how great your coffee tastes in the morning. So make sure you're cleaning that coffee maker more often than not. Correct recommends that you do a descaling of that coffee maker at least every three to six months. So here's my question for you. How often do you clean your Keurig? I mean, deep clean it. And what do you use? Tell me in the comment section below. And just so you know, I've raised three children. I've managed a home for more than 45 years and I am a nurse by profession. So if you wanna learn more about running a household, cooking and cleaning and laundry and health and beauty, subscribe. I would love to have you as a member of the TNT community. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying goodbye. I will see you in the next video.